taking some time on this chapter, and uh, I believe it'll be a, a real blessing to you if, if you'll listen and respond to it. And we live in a world that talks a lot about love but knows nothing. And I use that word purposefully. Uh, the world knows nothing about love. And, and you'll see as, as we look at it this morning, you know, we're so confused by the feelings that we forget love is not a feeling, love is an action. You know, love, Jesus didn't go to the cross because it felt good. He didn't go to the cross because it was something that he looked forward to uh, for the glory of it. The Bible says it was a shame. He despised the shame. But he, endured, <coughs> he endured the cross. And, and that's love. Now, I don't want to make love sound like a, a bad thing, but uh, love is not just a feeling. And uh, this morning, let, let's read 1 Corinthians 13. Let's read the whole chapter again. And uh, then we'll, we'll continue with some of the properties of love that we've been looking at. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. The greatest of these is charity. Just stop reading there. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13, we, we saw the first three verses, uh, the prominence of love, the importance of love. Uh, I just happened to be reading through 1 Corinthians in my morning devotions and um, finished this morning, and uh, I noticed in, in verse, chapter 16, verse 14, he says, let all your things be done with charity. Everything is affected, needs to be affected by our love. That's what he's saying, let all your things be done with charity. And then in verse 22 of chapter 16, he says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. He may not understand those words. They're, I guess they're Greek. Accursed. Our Lord is coming. It, it, we need to love the Lord. We need to love him now. Uh, when you die or when the Lord returns, it's going to be too late. Uh, the love of God is so important. And we've come to the properties of love in verses 4 through 8. And we need to understand that. We won't learn this from the world. You won't learn this in the natural realm. You're going to learn this in the supernatural because love is of God. God is love. That's where it comes from. That's what it is. And so he, as he describes action, I'm sorry, as he describes love, it's an action. Like he says in Romans 5.8, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You look at that word commendeth, it means placed together. What God did is he placed love and us together in Christ. That's what love is. Love is an action. Love is a person. And as we look at love, we're really looking at a picture of, of Jesus Christ. Now, last week we saw that love is long-suffering. Love is kind. Uh, love does not envy. Uh, this week we look at, at, at more of, of love's properties. Uh, the church that he was writing to originally, the church at Corinth, they struggled with love. We struggle with love. But the Lord can, can help us. In verse 4 there, we come to charity vaunteth not itself. Now you might not use that language today, 
but it just means love is not boastful. It's not promoting itself. Uh, he's talking about verbalizing pride. You, you know, the world nowadays encourages us to be proud and, and to verbalize it. You know, how wonderful we are. <laughs> uh, uh, the original word has to do with being a windbag. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> God says, don't be a windbag about yourself. Listen, nothing more boring than somebody talking about themselves. It, it's the flip side of envy. You're trying to make people envious of who and what you are. And the Corinthian church was filled with spiritual show-offs. It's indicated in chapter 14, verse 26. Let me read it. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Everybody wanted to talk. Nobody wanted to listen. And that's what was going on. Uh, they were vaunting themselves. The one that needs to be lifted up is not you or me. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said in John 3, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In John 12, he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, shall draw all men unto, unto myself. Jesus is the one that people need to see. Uh, we, um, we sing the song. The hymnal. Um, it's number 53 in the, the hymnal, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And that's where we need to be. Uh, we need to be seeing Jesus. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice them to his blood. Our focus needs to be on Jesus. Our boasting needs to be of him. In fact, he says in Galatians 6, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's where our glory is. That's where our boasting is. You want to boast? Boast about Jesus. <laughs> uh, love doesn't boast. It's not vaunting itself. Secondly, the next one he says is, love is not puffed up. Whenever I read that, I, I, have you ever gone fishing and caught a puff fish? Whatever, whatever it's called. <laughs> they puff themselves up. Uh, uh, that's what I always think about. You know, love is not puffed up. Love is not conceited. Uh, vaunting ourselves is the verbalizing of pride. Uh, being puffed up is the attitude of pride. You know, just that attitude that, boy, everybody should really like me. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned this guy last week. Moscone was a, uh, a musician many years ago. He dedicated an opera to himself. Here, here was his, his dedication. To myself, with distinguished esteem and unalterable <laughs> satisfaction. <laughs> uh, God says, don't be like that. <laughs> don't be puffed up. The Corinthian church was conceited. Uh, they had conceit. In uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 8, he says, Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us. I, I don't know, I don't think he's mocking them, but he's just making a contrast as to how great they were and how humble and poor he was, you know. And then in the next chapter, he says, <coughs> chapter 5, verse 1, It's reported commonly that there's fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Uh, you know, they had obvious sin in their midst, and yet they were so pleased with themselves as to how spiritual they were. Uh, it it, it kind of reminds you of the church at Laodicea that you look at there in Revelation chapter 3 uh, when they said, Thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You know, pride says, Oh, I wish you knew all about me. <laughs> Love says, I wish I knew about you. Some years ago, there was a missionary named William Carey. Well, evidently, a, a wonderful uh, example of, of Christianity. Uh, he he trans translated the Bible into 34 different languages. You know, I struggle with one. <laughs> uh, 
very faithful missionary, very humble man. He was at a dinner one time. He was a, a, a snob, approached him and spoke so loudly that everyone could hear and said, I understand that you were a shoemaker. He said, oh no, only a shoe repairman. He didn't care. Uh, you know, when, when you have an attitude of humility, you can't be insulted. Uh, what's the, the old saying? Empty trucks make the most noise. <laughs> uh, God doesn't want us to be puffed up. Uh, Proverbs, if you, if you read through the book of Proverbs, he, he says a lot about pride, and none of it is positive. Uh, let me just read a few. Proverbs 8.13, the, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. God hates pride. Proverbs 11.2, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. Proverbs 13.10, only by pride cometh contention. Listen, you're not going to have a fight in your home because you're so humble. Chapter 16, verse, verse 18, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. You've heard that one before. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low. Listen, God warns us. Now, don't be puffed up. That's not love. Love doesn't, doesn't say uh, how wonderful we are. Love is not big-headed. It's big-hearted. And yet in our world, uh, the world's philosophy is be proud of yourself. Let people know how proud you are of yourself. You know, John the Baptist, Jesus said this about John the Baptist. There's not a greater man born of women among men. Well, I'd love to have that, have, have the Lord say that about me. John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase, I must decrease. That needs to be our, our attitude. Love is not puffed up. Love is not proud and, and boastful. The next phrase there in 1 Corinthians 13, love doth not behave itself unseemly. Love doesn't behave rudely. Love doesn't have, act in an unbecoming manner uh, with undisciplined behavior. You know, just bad manners uh, are kind of the, the way things are nowadays. And bad manners say, I don't care about you. I'm the most important. Let me go first. I remember I was thinking it was at McDonald's and a, a kid almost pushed an old man out of the way and said, get out of the way, old man. That's certainly not love, is it? The old man wasn't me, so anyway. Uh, we can be so inflated in our own importance that we have no concern for anyone else. Teens rude to adults, adults rude to teens, husbands and wives rude to each other. At the church at Corinth, they would have a meal, and included would be the Lord's Supper, and some would have eaten all the, all the food before the others even got there. Uh, unseemly. That's not love. Love disciplines and changes its behavior with others in mind. It's not boastful or proud or rude. The next one says, love seeketh not her own. That just means love is not selfish. But if you get one thing here this morning, love is not about you. <laughs> love is something we give. You want love? Give it away. God has a rule. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Listen, if all you're concerned about is others loving you, you're going to be in trouble. But if you'll be concerned about loving others, you won't be able to handle all the love that will come your way. In the portrait of love, this would be the eyes. Love seeketh not our own. We're not talking here about putting up a mirror and looking at ourselves. We're talking about looking at others and, and seeing their needs. Jesus talked about this in, in Matthew 20 and verse 25. He talked about this, this attitude. Matthew 20 and verse 25 He says, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Man, that, that touches my heart when I think, here the king of the universe came, and he didn't come to be served, he came to serve. He came as a, as a servant, as a, a minister. Man, if he can do it, 
That's our example. We should do that. Love uh, seeketh not her own. He, he says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. I heard of a man who, who worked at a cemetery, and uh, every week, flowers would arrive for one particular grave. No one ever came, but flowers came. And one day, an, an older woman came. She was driven there by a chauffeur and got out and had a cane, and, and she came and looked at the flowers and, and talked to him, the man that worked there. Uh, said she'd been sending money so that the flowers could be put there. He said, well, I'm sorry you send the money. Sorry, she said. Yeah, he said, you know, the flowers fade so quickly and, and no one ever really sees them. He says, I visit old folks' homes and I go to hospitals and they dearly love some flowers. There's living people there, you know. Well, they didn't say anything else. Um, but a few weeks later, he, she came again. This time she was driving. She got out and had no cane. Uh, she said, uh, I'm taking the flowers to the hospitals and nursing homes myself. He said, the doctor doesn't know why I'm getting better, but I do. I have someone else to live for. Love seeketh not her own. Love is not easily provoked. Love is not always ready for a fight. You know, we, we talk, we like to talk about righteous indignation. Righteous indignation is usually when we get angry as opposed to when somebody else gets angry. <laughs> Righteous indignation is when we're defending God. There's a time to be mad at Satan. We should, we should be mad at sin. But uh, being provoked is defending self. And let's be honest, most of the time when we're provoked, that's, that's what it's about. How could he pull over in front of me like that? Doesn't he know who, who I am? <laughs> love is not easily provoked. You know, it's easy to say that you love. But if you're always angry, it doesn't make any sense. You may or may not have heard of a preacher many years ago named Jonathan Edwards. Very well-known pastor of his time. He preached a sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Uh, he, he used to just lean on the pulpit and read his sermons. And, and as he read that sermon, man, people were uh, touched by the Holy Spirit and were crying out and uh, you know, afraid they are going to fall into hell at any moment. Anyway, um, he had a daughter who was often angry. And a young man asked to marry her. He said, no, I, I don't think you should marry her. She, uh, she always loses her temper. The young man said, well, isn't she a Christian? He said, well, son, the grace of God can live where other people can't. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's easy to say we're a Christian. It's easy to say we love. But love is not easily provoked. Uh, love saves us from that sneer of envy, from the swagger of boasting, and the inner tendency to be so self-important that we're rude and contemptuous to others. Uh, the properties of love, as, as God presents these, uh, we need to stop and ask ourselves, uh, how am I matching up to what God is, is saying? You know, God says love is patient. Many times we're impatient. Love is kind. We're frequently unkind, aren't we? Love knows no envy. The Corinthians were, uh, were jealous even of other people's spiritual gifts sometimes. Now, love makes no parade, but we're often proud. Love's never rude. Love is never selfish, but uh, let's face it, we're mostly self-centered. Love is, never gets irritated, but we can be so short-tempered with people. Love is never resentful, but oftentimes we seem to look for the slights and wrongs, and we may not write them down, but... We put them away. Love is never glad when someone else goes wrong. But we sometimes take delight in the failures of others. Love is gladdened by goodness and slow to expose the wrong and eager to believe the best, but we're many times judgmental. God's standard of love is Jesus Christ. Are we loving or are we carnal? And as we see this, this pattern... In, in 1 John, if you want to learn more about love, he, he goes into it a lot in the book of 1 John. 1 John 3.23, he says, This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. The two most basic parts of Christianity are to believe on Jesus and to love others. 
That's the, the most basic parts of Christianity. Are we loving or are, are we carnal? In chapter 4 of 1 John, he, he says in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Later in verse 21, he says, This commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. It's such an important part of the Christian life. We need to put love into, into practice. And I find there's, there's two ways that we are selfish about this. We focus on self in saying, sometimes we say, I'm so good. Man, everybody would just be so blessed if they really knew me. <laughs> but you know, the other way, the, the other extreme is, I'm so sinful. There's times when we just think, oh, the, you know, the world would just be a better place without me. I'm so sinful. How could anybody care for me or, or love, love me or, or know, want to know anything about me? Listen, both of those are selfish, sinful attitudes. I'm so good, I'm so bad. 2 Corinthians 7, verse, verse 10, he says, Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. The kind of sorrow we're talking about is the sorrow of the world worketh death. You don't need the sorrow of the world. You don't just need to be sorry. You need to repent. And when we sin, God has a cure. For, listen, if, if your problem is sin, God has a cure for that. And it's found in Jesus. We don't have to focus on self and mope around and, and just spend all this time with ourselves. Listen, <laughs> you find yourself, you're going to be disappointed. You find Jesus, you won't be. <laughs> and that's what we need. We need to find Jesus. And, and the way we, God changes this is he says, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into his image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Uh, you keep looking at self... Hey, you're going you're gonna to be troubled. You're going to be troubled all the time. You'll either be too proud or you'll be too disappointed. Or, uh, look to Jesus. There's no disappointment in Jesus. We need to focus on him. And if we will, he'll change us. He'll change us from glory to glory. Are you saved? 1 John 4, 8 says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. And then the next verse he says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Christ is the covering for our sins. We can't be good enough to get to heaven. We can't even love on our own. God is love. Love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Listen, if, if, if it's a problem with love, stop and see, do I know the Lord? Have I trusted Christ as my Savior? You can count on the fact that God loves you. God is love. 1 John 4, 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And the Bible says, We've seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we've known and believed the love that God hath to us. Have you believed the Lord this morning? Have you believed God's love toward you? Have you trusted Christ as, as your Savior? Jesus called it being born again. I've been to a couple of births, and they're, they're very definite. There's nothing indefinite about it. Uh, you know, boom, you yeah. know. Well, maybe 20, 20 hours of boom, you yeah. uh, know. It, it, can, it can be pretty tough, but then at the end, there's, there's a product. Here, here it comes. Man, world, watch out, you know. Well, it's, it's the same with salvation. Uh, there's, there's a bit of a process. You know, the Lord wrestles with us a bit. But when you trust Christ as your Savior, you're born again by the Spirit of God. And uh, if there's never been that uh, exchange with God, if, there, if there's never been a time when you've trusted Christ as your Savior, man, work out your salvation. God talks about that. Make sure that you're saved. Don't, don't let uh, just 
Uh, your feelings guide you. Go by God's Word. And uh, this morning, you, you can know, uh, God says, again, it's in 1 John, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. It's by this book. This is where we put our faith, is in what God has said and done. You can know. You can have assurance uh, of your salvation. Uh, this morning, let me encourage you. Make sure you know the Lord. And then, begin to look to Him. Begin to... Look in his face in the mirror of God's word and let him change you from glory to glory. You know, it's a glory to get saved. But then you go on to, to another glory. You begin to be more and more like Jesus until someday God says you're going to be with him. You'll be like him. You'll see him as he is. We'll, we'll, it'll all make sense when we stand with him in glory. What a blessing. Well, let's go to him in, in prayer this morning. I hope the Lord is speaking to your heart about love. I hope you'll make some adjustments and if that first adjustment needs to be that you get saved, listen, that, that's the most important one. Because then God will walk with you and, and work, walk you through all of these difficulties. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you that you are love. Father, we, we often misunderstand this subject. And I pray that you'd help us to put aside our own prejudice, our, our own explanations, and Lord, believe you in what you've said this, to us this morning. I pray for each one in their own homes and their situations that, that they would apply your word to what they're going through, and Father, that they would know you and, and, and believe when you say that you love them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.